Hello, welcome to Country Sports TV. Now, our first clip is Steve Evans, and he's a master of mink hounds up in the Midlands in England. And he goes through a day's hunting and the different tunes that a huntsman use to notify his hunt staff and the followers of what's happening during a day. The audio isn't very good on it because it's done with my old camera. Now, this is Steve Evans at the Midland Show last year. Hunting calls on a normal hunting day when you're hunting hounds. It doesn't have to be um, basses, beagles, fox hounds. This is about the normal hunting calls on a hunting day. Right, leaving the meat. That's leaving the meat. When you leave a meat, you go off and you probably draw for your first. <coughs> so what you do first, if you want hounds, hounds go off a bit, you want them back to you, you use this call. That's to bring hounds back to you if they get too far away. And when you do find your quarry, what we call the find, to egg the hounds on, we use this call. That's what you call hiking the hounds on when you find. And normally if you were the fox hounds, or you, you want to leave cover, and to note the hounds you leave in cover, you blow this call, which has gone away. That's leaving cover. <coughs> you, you go on and do your hunting and whatever, and <coughs> so, sometime if you're lucky, or like beagles or bassets, um, this day and age now you can you can up rabbits and kill a rabbit. So if you do have a kill, a rabbit, you blow this. That's the end of the, end of the hunt. And normally on, a, on a, the end of the day, to tell everybody you're going home, the hunt followers, you blow this, which is going, going home. That's the end of the day going on. Evans is one of the best horn blowers I think I know. And what we've done, if you go to our sister Pots cast station, which is ucsw.podbean.com, which is country sports radio, we've got Steve Evans blowing the hunting horn that you can use as a free ringtone for your mobile phone or cell phone if you're in the States. Now our next report, we caught up with Brian Friend. Now Brian is taking the Scottish Government and the English Government to court over the hunting ban. Now his appeal was, was rejected, but he looks at the words of Lord Good Brian. Afternoon. My name is Brian Friend and I have taken a case against the Scottish and the English anti-hunting legislation through the courts to the House of Lords. And last October, I had the privilege of addressing the Law Lords at the House of Lords on this subject. And on the 28th of November last year, they gave their, dis their decision. Now, the appeal was dismissed, and in fact, they found that, it, in their view, it had not been incompatible with the Convention of Human Rights. But they did say 
that it should go to Strasbourg for, to, for decision because it was up to Strasbourg, Strasbourg to decide the reach of the Convention. But what is more important out of that judgment is what I've been trying to achieve for seven years. A judge who would identify my way of life as hunting as my way of life, as important as other people's way of life. And it was encapsulated in part of the speech of Lord Brown of Eton under Hayward. And I'm going to read the two paragraphs that are so relevant to my way of life. Lord Brown had agreed with Lord Bingham that the, the convention at this stage, without further decisions from Strasbourg, did not apply to my way of life of hunting. But this is what he went on to say. But I strongly wish that it were otherwise, and for my part, would hope to see the jurisprudence governing the scope of Article 8 further developed by the Strasbourg Court. Why should it not encompass a broad philosophy of live and let live, or, in Mrs Pritty's case, let die? Why should people not be free to engage in whatever pursuits they wish, pursuits that is central to their well-being, as hunting was recognised in the courts below, to be in the lives of some of these appellants, a core part? Unless there is a good and sufficient reason, as indeed was found in Mrs Pritty's own case, to forbid it. Article 8 protection is recognised to extend to a right to identity and to personal development. And as Pretty first articulated the notion of personal autonomy, it encompasses almost any aspect of a person's sexuality and a good deal else that is clearly personal. But why should respect for private life not encompass also wider concepts of self-fulfilment. The traditional culture and lifestyle of gypsies and laps is protected under Article 8 because each is recognised as an ethnic group with its own particular identity. But why should these groups alone have their way of life safeguarded? Why not others too? Of course the hunting community is in no sense ethnically based nor indeed comparably identifiable as a defined group. But it may be doubted whether many gypsies are any more wedded to their particular lifestyle than our numbers of keen huntsmen to theirs. Many people, in a real sense, live for some particular activity, whether their profession, whether, whether their profession or their recreation. In a real sense, it defines them. Often it provides them with feelings of identity, self-esteem and position in the community. Take music or dance, or chess or bridge, or polo or golf or climbing or canoeing. Should not a human rights convention ideally operate to ensure that all such activities could only be banned for good reason? Some perhaps may be regarded as more personal than others, carried out in circumstances of great intimacy. But why should that be critical? All of them are activities which people may choose to devote their, uh, their uh, to devote much of their lives, and which for some, and for some are all important. The alternative clearly is that any or all of these actors could be banned perhaps by some Taliban-like administration and that those affected, amateurs or professionals, however fundamentally, would have no right to call for a justification for the ban and no redress in the courts were none afforded. The government enacting such legislation would of course be politically accountable to the electorate. But if a majority in the country favoured such a ban, prompted say by feelings of prejudice or jealousy towards a wealthy or intellectual elite, there might in fact be political advantage in it. I wish I had the ability to write words like that. That encompasses everything I've been saying for the last seven years in the courts and for the last 20 years of my hunting life. Hunting is a way of life. The hunting community is, I believe, an ethnic group. And Lord Brown says we have a case to answer. Thank you. Thank you for watching Country Sports TV. Next weekend we're at the Cotswold Show.